All right, I'm freezing my tits off. I don't want to stay here too long. What's this? There's so much stuff in here. Why don't we take some of it out, Jumpy? Like this giant fish. Or sturdy rope. Could be a fish, you never know. It's a rope. It looks like a fish. Well, we could just use it to attach to something else, I suppose. On it. A water bottle. Awesome. A water bottle. Yes, it is. Sweet. Love that color commentary, you guys. Dry ice. Dry ice. Can't you make that stuff cause an explosion if you see it on something that's airtight? Maybe I should put it in your asshole. Oh wait, that's not airtight. Explode. Yeah, didn't she do that in school? She never underestimate the power of expanding gas. It sounds like a plot. Junpei picked up the dry ice with his sleeve so as to avoid burning himself. Dry ice is just frozen carbon dioxide, right? Yeah, it is. I wonder how warm it has to get for it to turn back into gas again. Hell if I know. That's not going to help us anyway. Oh, well, I figured we might be able to use it to get out of here. They're about to move on when June spoke up. Carbon dioxide sublimation point is negative 109 degrees. Any warmer than that, and it'll turn into gas. Any lower, and it becomes a solid. Junpei looked at her, dumbfounded. How do you know that? Tee hee. Despite my looks, I'm the clean, um, queen of random knowledge. Looks bad to mess up when you're showing off. Argo mouth. <laughs> oh, you're so cold your mouth's going numb? Yep. What's white? You're just doing that on purpose, aren't you? June giggled and did her best to hide her guilt. At least she was still feeling good enough to joke around, Junpei told himself. Come on, guys. Don't you think that's kind of weird? I wonder why it doesn't turn into a liquid first. Santa was now shivering at an astounding rate, but his curiosity seemed unaffected. Junpei, however, was not in a mood to discuss science. Um... Yeah, that's weird. It did seem rather odd to Junpei, and he couldn't help but think about it. June answered. But it can turn into a liquid. Carbon dioxide turns into liquid if you put it under high enough pressure. But in one atmosphere, normal air pressure, it won't turn into liquid, right? That's right. Instead of melting, it'll do what's called sublimating and change immediately from a solid state to a gaseous one. See? That is weird. Water's a liquid between 32 and 212 degrees. So why isn't that the case for carbon dioxide? June replied with an answer that stunned both of them. There's a kind of ice that doesn't turn into liquid when it goes about 32 degrees. Bleh? I heard about it. Its melting point is 96 degrees. Ice with a melting point of 96 degrees? You mean there's water that freezes at 96 degrees? Yeah, well, you could also look at it as ice that won't melt until it's 96 degrees. What the fuck? Shut up. Water that freezes at 96 degrees? Ice that won't melt until it's 96 degrees? June was cold as hell, but this was too interesting to ignore. He did his best to warm up by rubbing his arms and stamping his feet, then put the question to June. So what's this ice with a melting point of 96 degrees called? I heard it's called Ice 9. Ice 9? Originally, Ice 9 was a made-up substance invented by a science fiction author. But recently, scientists have discovered that such a substance actually exists. Wait, hold up. What? So this thing is called S9 or is it water? Like I said, the ice is over 96 degrees. It'll be liquid. If it's under that, it'll solidify. So you could think of it as a polymorph of H2O. Here, think of it like diamonds and graphite. They're both made of carbon, right? But depending on the structure of the crystallization, the hardness and structure are completely different. So you're saying normal water and this ice liner are like that? Yep. She wasn't finished. Have you heard the story about the crystallization of glycerin? For 150 years after the discovery of glycerin, people cooled it, warmed it, and did all sorts of things to it. But whatever they did, it never crystallized. However, one day in 1920, some glycerin that was en route to England by ship was discovered to have crystallized during the trip. Naturally, scientists worldwide wanted to research this new crystallized form of glycerin and began asking for samples of the seed. A seed is, of course, a sample of the original crystallized substance. With the seed crystal, further crystallization of glycerin would be a simple matter. However, something very strange happened. Not only did the glycerin encouraged by seed crystals begin to crystallize, nearby samples did as well. It didn't end there. After that day, all glycerin in the world began to crystallize naturally when cooled to less than 64 degrees. Before that day, no matter how glycerin was cooled, it refused to crystallize. 
once the crystallization had begun. It was almost like, how do I put it? It was almost like all the glycerin in the world was communicating. Communicating in some way that we can't sense. Oh my god. Junpei. Ah. I was kind of annoyed. Jun was nice, but he had enough of our ridiculous stories. So all of a sudden a substance began to crystallize without a seed crystal? That seemed unlikely. No, impossible. In fact, it was utterly ridiculous. Even so, Junpei couldn't help but ask. What does that have to do with Ice-9? He was surprised it was Santa and not June who answered. What she's saying is that it's a lot like Ice-9. What happened, I mean? A lot like? That would be bad. If water everywhere started freezing at 96 degrees? Man. It'd be, it'd be the end of the world. Junpei felt that Santa might not be treating the idea of the end of the world with the proper concern. At any rate, we're not going to have to worry about the end of the world unless we can get out of here pretty damn quick. He was right. Junpei shivered. Alright guys, I think that's enough of that. I didn't think we'd get quite this far off topic. I mean, I know I'm kinda at fault here, but we can't be screwing around anymore. Seriously. I might go by the name Santa right now, but I didn't grow up in Iceland. I freaking hate the cold. So let's get cracking, alright? Gotta find a way out of here. Santa stomped off, clearly doing his best to pretend the cold wasn't affecting him. Selfish, isn't he? Thought Junpei to himself. Still, Santa was right. It was high time they got back to their switch. The story of Ice Nine had him interested, but there'd be no time to think about that once they'd gotten out of the freezer. Junpei looked at June, nodded, and resumed his search of the room. Boop. What's over here? There's some frozen meat up there. Looks like Vork. Huh? What's this? It looks like a tag or something. Sweet. Things frozen in here. Doesn't look like there's anything else interesting. What up? Frozen chicken. Hell yeah. Alright. Well, and combine things. Combine. Uh. Oh yeah. Combine. 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 Nope. Uh. Nope. Pork and chicken. I'm gonna make myself a sausage. Ah, yeah, everyone knows chicken and dry ice go together. Alright, the dry ice is all in pieces now. Sweet. Try to combine that. I'm gonna put these pieces of dry ice into the water bottle. Sweet. And let's just tie a rope on here. Sweet. And the pork and the knife. No. Alrighty. So... There's water dripping from this pipe. Hmm. Looks like when the pipe burst, the water hit the doorknob and froze it in place. This water actually seems almost warm. I'm sure it's just relatively warm. There's warm water flowing from the pipe. Warm water dripped from the ruptured pipe near the door. Junpei pulled out the water bar to fill the dry ice, let a good amount of water fall in, and then quickly sealed it up tight. The makeshift bomb complete, he tied it to the doorknob as quick as he could manage in the cold. Alright, that's set. So, uh, what do we do now? We just need to give it a little, uh, tap. The bottle's already about to pop. If we just throw a rock or something at it, it'll go off all on its own. Small rock. Small rock. Why don't I just use the chicken leg again? Junpei looked down at the floor. Scattered across it were pieces of dry ice left over from the larger chunk he crushed earlier. Alright, this ought to do the trick. He pulled his sleeve down over his hand to keep from getting burned and grabbed a chunk of dry ice. It was a pretty good size, about as big as a pool ball. He figured to be just about the right size. Alright guys, stand back. Actually, we should probably hide somewhere. Both Santa and June looked at him with new concern. Where exactly do you expect us to hide, genius? It isn't really anywhere big enough. There are two places big enough. The hatch and the freaking... Yeah, there is. Look. Right here. We can hide in there. Junpei pulled open the door to the small cellar. 
The freezer, also a viable alternative. I know we're not Indiana Jones, but come on, get inside, quick. Santa and June nodded and jumped down into the hole. Junpei quickly followed. In his hand, he could feel the chill of frozen carbon dioxide even through his sleeve. He tightened his grip, took aim, and prepared to throw. All right, here it goes. Three, four, five. They're counting the wrong way. Oops. That is a really sad excuse for a joke, man. Sorry, dude. All right, for real this time. You guys ready? Yes, whenever you're ready. Just throw the damn thing. All right, here I go. Three, two, one. Junpei threw the chunk of dry ice as hard as he could. With the same motion, he ducked into the cellar of Santa in June, just as... Junpei leapt up out of the cellar and ran to the door. Jumpy! Ice on the door. Is it gone? Yeah, it's gone. The blast must have shattered it. Yes, alright, let's see if it opens. Junpei grabbed the knob and pushed with all his might. Ah, the door gave way easily, and all three of them tumbled out of the freezer at once. Hooray! We're out! June, relieved, collapsed under the floor. Move! Santa shoved past Junpei and ran straight to the grill, which he immediately grabbed. Ow! Damn it! Hot, 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 hot! Fuck! He proceeded to kick the grill in a futile but amusing fit of rage. But where was Lotus? It took Junpei only a moment to find her. She was sitting on the counter, idly scratching her chest. Well, welcome back. I was starting to get tired of waiting for you guys. With a great yawn, Lotus lowered herself off of the counter. Junpei clenched his teeth and walked toward her. What were you doing? What do you mean, what was I doing? I was waiting. We were gonna die! Oh yeah? But you didn't, so everything worked out alright, didn't it? What the hell? Just kidding. It might not look like it, but I was really worried. Don't give me that crap. I'm telling the truth. I mean, if you died, then I'd be in trouble too. If you died, then I'd be stuck here, and I'd die too. See? I did all I could. I even looked around to see if there was anything I could use to pry open the door. But I couldn't find anything. So all I could do was wait. I mean, what else did you want me to do? Call the cops? It was true that there wasn't much she could have done. but something about her tone. Junpei gritted his teeth. Fine. But there was one thing I have to ask you. What's that? You didn't close the door, did you? What? You think I closed the door on you? Why would I do something like that? It closed on its own. I told you before, if you die, then I die too. She was right, and Junpei knew it. Without them, she'd be in very serious trouble. It seemed that an accident was the only explanation for the door's closure. If Lotus had really wanted to kill them, all she would have had to do was bar the door from the outside. And she hadn't. Well, she hadn't done anything. The most she was guilty of was laziness or negligence, not attempted murder. Junpei swallowed his anger and did his best to apologize. Well, I'm sorry. Sorry I doubted you. Hmm? Oh yeah, well, that's alright, as long as you understand. Notice looked away and twirled her hair between her fingertips. His vengeance against the grill complete, Santa swatted back toward Junpei and Lotus. Hey, no more screwing around, you two. Numeral two, break time's over. Especially for you, lady. You've just been sitting on that fat ass of yours while we were freezing to death. Nothing wrong with a fat ass. How rude, I was plenty busy. Yeah, yeah, how about you put all that energy into something besides bitching? Let's go. Attitude, son. Where's that grill? There we go. Let's grill up some pork. I guess we'll put this meat on the grill. Yeah. Hey, what are you doing? What are you going to do with the paper burns? Come on, it'll be fine. I mean, it's not like it's going to burn right away, right? I just got to keep an eye on it, and the paper will be fine. Well, they can argue all they want. I'm going to keep an eye on this pork. Cool, looks like it's about time. I'm going to try taking the paper out. Jumpy, be careful. Sweet of her to care, but I know what I'm... Ouch! See? Told you. Hey, what the hell are you doing? Hurry up and take the paper out. It's not coming out. This thing's frozen stiff. I can't get it out. So are we going to have to cut the meat? Yeah, looks that way. It's a good thing I got a knife. Alright, now that I've sharpened the knife, 
Yes, I get the board. Awesome, Junpei. Now I can cut out the paper. C plus internet. Do you think it's some kind of code? Damn it, they're just screwing around. Junpei, do you know what CNF stands for? Um, 12 and, was it 16? No, 15. I think maybe it stands for corporate finance? Thought it was clever and funny. No? Alright. Boop. Boop, 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 boop. There we go. This is probably what you're supposed to use to enter the password. Maybe if you put in the right number, it'll open the oven door. Junpei, maybe the note you found earlier. Yeah, I know. Do you know how to enter those numbers? I think E is for enter and C is for clearing. So basically, when I'm ready to submit my answer, I'll press E. So if I screw up, I just press C, right? Lotus nodded. Alright, let's give it a shot. What? Oh wait, plus. Okay. Um, 2737. One, two, one, zero. One, five. I'm so confused. Huh? This is weird. Hey, you're just punching in random numbers, aren't you? Maybe if you just enter it like I, like it said in the hint. Ah, shut up. Just shut up. Okay. C plus 10 plus F. Let's see. Wait, 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 wait. Yeah, damn it, I'm an idiot. 12 and 16, 28 plus 15, 43. There we go. Sounds like metal is falling. Well, I guess that went well. Yeah, the door opened. Good job, Jumpy. This looks like a lowercase h, but the line next to it is throwing me off. This is a symbol for Saturn. Remember? There was an elevator next to the main staircase. Wasn't there a mark like this on the card reader next to it? Oh yeah, I remember that. I guess that means the card ain't gonna, ain't gonna help us get out of this room then. I'm not sure. Why don't we try it out? Let's. Do, 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 do. Yes! I think it's unlocked now. You did it, Jumpy. Let's get out of here. Yes, let's go! I'm a genius. Even though it took me a while to figure out the next decimal. It's okay, though. Anyway. You know what that means, I presume. Bye.